Welcome back to the program. It's Cousins Clubhouse. JP, John Zapata, VG, Volley's is Greg Caputo. Yo. So, uh, what's up, boys? What's going on? How was your Mother's Day? It was awesome. Yeah? Awesome. What'd you do? So, I spent the morning with my mom, but then in the, late in the afternoon, we went to Burgantine to see my, my fiance's mom. Had a lot of, I ate a lot yesterday because, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> a lot good, of, good. A lot good. of Italian food yesterday. It was good, though. Good. It's good seeing good. the moms. You had a question. So, I think this is interesting. Yeah. So pose this. Yeah. All right. He had a question, Andrew. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, like, listen, cuz you're not only shaping the future Philly sports fans, but you're shaping Philadelphia men here, cuz. All right. All right. So, so what's your my question? dilemma was, listen, I love my future mom-in-law. In two months, we're going to, me and my, my fiance are going to get married. So I asked this to a lot of, you know, young men around my age, you know, in long-term relationships. So I spent half the day with my mom and the other half with my fiance's mom. Because she's still like a mom to me. And I and I got a lot of different answers. And I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Do you, if you are in a long-term relationship, do you split up Mother's Day or do you spend it only with your mom? So it's interesting because it sounds like you have a great relationship with your oh, definitely. future mother-in-law. She sounds like an awesome woman. Yeah, she's awesome. However, <laughs> all right, this is the mom rule. Until your wife becomes a mother, right? Which case then she becomes center stage, right? Like she's she's got to be the center, and you split with her and mom, mm -hmm. right? Your own mother, you got to go mom. Okay, all right. Mom you all got day. mom all day. I feel all right. right. And then if you're white, then you're then you got to merge. Then you merge with her mom, like the whole thing. But until that happens, you you got you know the only mother is your mom. I hear what you're saying. So you he he's got to split up with his partner. Half the day I no. split. Well, both so she my, goes to her mom and he yes. goes to his mom, and that's it for the day. Yeah, yeah so that's totally you get married, fine. Then when you, oh, once you man. get married, I don't know about that. <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. And then you get married, and then it's you you split the day up, and then when she becomes a mother, yeah. you have children. Then you merge it all together. So only after marriage, yes. do you split the day up. Correct. Hmm, interesting. Yes. All right. So I split the day up. My I did well, the you're morning. Married. Yes, I did the morning with my mom. Brought her over some bagels. We hung out. You don't she merge. Did, we merge, but Pega's mom is deceased. But we went to the crypt afterwards. So oh, we yeah. do split the day. You yeah. know. Yeah. So we well, got to do that. Always do half yeah. day with each. Yeah. 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 That's good, Andrew. Yeah, I do the uh, my mom first thing. Yes. Yeah, I go I go hang out with my mom. She goes hangs hangs out with her mom. We're not married yet, so I understand like the whole marriage thing. Like you you got to share there. This is my sure. first year doing yeah. this too. Because she becomes your mother in law, so she technically yeah, is then her, your mother. Part of your life. But you like, know, I love my mother in law. She's awesome. There's only one mama, you know, right. and that's my mama. Right. <laughs> so we so, like so, we put that. <laughs> so you spent the day with your mother. Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah. It was a good time. This is my yeah. first year splitting it up, so it was definitely interesting. But I can't wait to have yeah everyone in my house, my kids, my moms. Be yeah, like then then that's the merge piece. Yeah. But it's still it's still that happens. <laughs> you gotta be loyal to your mother. That's true. You're always loyal to your mother, but you know you gotta then share the spotlight. Yeah, it's a big day. It is. Yeah. It is now a big my day. mom and my aunt Cookie, but both my mom and my aunt Cookie, who I loved, uh, 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 passed away. So Tad's mom that we had a so we had a night last night, but we spent her we spent the day her day right, mm -hmm. or at the baseball field. There you go. Because the and the moms like the, 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 I, I give it to the moms right because poor, my poor wife she hasn't had Mother's Day in forever <laughs> because they do these Mother's Day tournaments. Yeah, it's brutal. So yeah. these tournaments are all weekend. They last all day, right? Like now. It's the best. spitting rain and freezing yesterday. Oh, my God. Right? Like, she's like, what? <laughs> Do I got to go? To and she, nah, she, of course, she goes every year. And the mom's like, and they do their own thing, right? Like, they bought bottles of champagne. And That's awesome. Yeah, pastries. Yeah. And, and they made bellinis. And, and uh, Sounds like you a know, good time. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, listen, they were fun loving bunch of ladies. We had Michael Campbell in the comments section said Mother's Day at a Little League baseball field is utter nonsense. Who do the who do these leagues leagues think they are? <laughs> oh, it's a big deal. Yes. All throughout the you know, Delaware Valley, Mother's Day tournaments. 
That's wild. That is, oh, yeah. Do they do it on Father's Day as well? Yes. Nah, nothing on Father's Day. Just golfing and fishing. <laughs> that would be crazy. No, no, if there have, were, it would be crazy if there were no tournaments on Father's Day. I mean, yeah. It was, we had, oh, well, my, I, one of my favorite Father's Day moments, Moss hit a home run. There you go. Oh, there you nice. Go. Yeah, That's awesome. That's a nice yeah, gift. And gave me he pointed a, at you. Gave me the ball. Trotting around. Yeah, he gave me the ball. We took a picture. Oh, oh nice. That's, awesome. That's yeah, great. Man. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that was a great Father's Day moment. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Like, I, I, I love that stuff. So that was yesterday. All right, boys, a couple things. Let's go over. Man, Wheeler yesterday. Wheels. It was one of those games where you go, he just doesn't have it. It's amazing. Nine at, or 19 out of 20 games. Wheeler is lights out. Yep. And it was that one, and you saw from the start. Oh, I knew because I bet over seven strikeouts <laughs> by inning two. I was like, ah, I'm beat. He does not have it today. I didn't think I don't think he got his first strikeout till the third inning. Yeah. He just had no command. He was just missing on the edges. Just couldn't hit the edges at all yeah. yesterday. He's always due for a bad game. And let's all let's not remember. Like, listen, the, the Marlins may be tanking or whatever the GM wants to say, but they still are pesky. Like they, they still got some bats in that lineup. And so it's just, you just chalk it up to being wheels day off there. That place that was horrendous. That's so hard to get. Like, it was funny. I was watching because we had a game with 1230. I had a break in between. I was, I thought I put the game on and I hate that. That stadium store, that franchise is a, Trash franchise. Stadium is nice, <laughs> but nobody wants to go there. Did I hear right? Did they not have the air conditioning on? And oh. It was like 90 degrees yesterday. In Miami uh, weather? Yeah. No. I thought that I heard them say that. Oh, it's just a terrible. trash franchise, though. It's horrible. The place is just terrible. Well, they don't, do, it's a sleepy environment. They, they, they should not be there. Topper was talking about it on before Friday's game, saying like how it's tough to get your energy up because literally there's no one in there. Like, what are you feeding off? So it's important for the guys in the dugout to kind of get each other up. There's yeah, literally a dude. There's literally a dude sleeping in the tenth inning. I don't know if you saw him, <laughs> but he was behind one of the dugouts. They showed. Well, they, I forget what the scene was, but they showed one of the batters, and he's sitting back there, he had glasses on, and he's lounged back, eyes closed, sleeping. I do. It, it was like that. I'll never forget. So that franchise came from comes from Montreal. Yep. So I was in Montreal. I covered games at in Montreal, and it was the same thing. There was like four thousand people there. Really. It was, and 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 most of them were smoking throughout the game. Yeah. It was just the worst environment ever. That Which guy's probably passed dome. out. I mean, you got to pound beers to sit through that environment. You know, I don't oh, know. If so you the Expos right. so had. had the Expos had problems bringing fans out to the to the games or something. Oh yeah, there was Man, nobody in the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody. Oh, and then you got go to hockey season. The place is packed every night. The yeah, but nobody. You go to Montreal and there's a Canadians game. There's nobody on the streets. Yeah, they are deserted. Everyone's watching it. Somewhere. It's like football here. Yeah, they just shut everything off and it's yeah. hockey. No, we, that's the truth. Can, can I get your opinion on something? Because top, I, I have a maniac friend who bust on topper every game, even though they're the best record the of baseball. Got to get Wheeler out in the third. You knew he didn't have it. You cannot remove your ace no, after no, three no, innings. You got to no, let him try no, and pitch no, his no, way out, no, right? No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Ridiculous. No, no. That's no, that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, no. You got to give your your ace every chance. Absolutely. To get it going, because there, there are times, sometimes, and you see it with those guys. First innings always when they have trouble, right? Mm -hmm. And then they fall, then they lock in. Mm -hmm. There are times when if you don't have it. You lock in, but then you may not lock in until third inning. Like, you got to give it a chance. You never know what happens. It's not like it's game six of the World no, Series. No, no right. <laughs> no, if that's the case, yeah. then, you, then you take them out. A little different story. How about those seven, eight, nine hitters for Friday and Saturday? I just added some stats up. They went 11 for 23, 478 average, six runs, six RBIs. Not Sosa, Pache, and Rojas. Yeah. Wow. And nice Friday, Rosa, Saturday. Home run. Too. Yeah. Rojas, home run. Yeah, we got our Latinos at the bottom there. I like that. Yeah. We're raking a little bit. I <laughs> love it. I mean, they could work on their batting or bunting a little bit. They're a little rough with the bunting with the Sosa and Rojas. It's funny. You're old school. The best is, I, the first thing he says when he walks in, how could those guys not know how to bunt? If you're not a power like, hitter, you got to know bunts. how to bunt. Come on. My Nobody dad, knows how to bunt. I was like, my dad's like, all they got to do is catch the ball with the bat. What are they trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> There's an art to, uh, to bunting a 96-mile-an-hour yeah. pitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is tough. So right. We're uh, on the muck the fets now, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, actually, muck the fets. I actually wore a shirt that said that to Citizens Bank Park, and the, the usher made me turn it inside out before oh, he let me through on. the gate. Really? Yes. Why? Yes. It's he said it was obscene. 
<laughs> was he in a Mets fan there? Yeah, I'm just kidding. He must have been from New York. <laughs> That's fantastic. The, the New York thing continues. Yeah. We right. Go. The New York thing continues. You know, we just had to deal with the whole Sixers-Knicks thing, right? The Rangers. How about... The Pacers complain about all those calls, and suddenly they're just smoking the Knicks right yeah. now. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Right? I love it. Interesting. Smoking. I know. The it, process is own. TJ right. McConnell coming up big, yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, OG's out, but he's not that good. Oh. They got smoked yesterday. Yeah, they're, they got they got killed. Yeah. They got absolutely killed. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, because uh, I hate them. I mean, the Mets have always been a team that we have hated. Blech. Right? And you covered it, because you covered the Mets. Oh. That must it, have been a tough time for you. It was. It was a uh, – so it was funny because when I got the job in New York, like, mm-hmm. so I was in Chicago. I was working for the AP, and I was looking for a newspaper gig. And so I, I sent – I man, I would send – they call it your clip file, your portfolio. And it was like samples of your work and what you've done. And I sent them all over the country. I mean, I, I – back then you had this – you had to spend a lot of money on postage, right? Because oh, yeah. you would send mm. physical clips, right? Like you get the, and I used to spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on sending out the postage to, I mean, you name it, every newspaper. So I, I got, you know, a, a bunch of uh, close calls and rejections mm-hmm. and interviews. So I finally go, the post was adding a Sunday paper, and so they had a position. So I go there and the editor, who I talk about a lot, said to me, do you want to cover the Giants or the Mets? Oh, <laughs> Pick your poison. Right, oh, exactly. That's horrible. And so it was funny because he said, if you cover the Mets, you'll start, you can start Monday. Right? And I was like, well, I'll take the Mets because I, I, I didn't want to, like, if I said the check? Giants, if I said, yeah, if I said the Giants, who knows, like, I'm thinking maybe, you know, the budget goes away. Yes. The job, so you got to take the Mets, right? Yep. Even though I'd rather have taken the Giants, once I hate the Giants, but I, I love football, right? And yep. I love baseball, too, so it didn't matter. So I was like, I'll just do the Mets. But the Mets, it was like, I hate the Mets. Like, the Mets were always, like, <laughs> didn't trash. You, didn't you cover like, when they were good, the though? the Yankees. Like, still the Yankees, right? right? Did you cover when they were good, though? No, they were horrendous. Oh, okay. hmm. They were horrendous. Makes it a little easier, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it was a little bit better because Dallas Green was the manager, uh, okay. and I love Dallas because yeah. Dallas managed the Phillies mm-hmm. in nineteen eighty. So I used to talk about the Philly all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they must have loved that. Oh, they hated it. Yeah, hated it. Hated That's it. awesome. But the Mets, like, uh, we had this relationship with Jose them. Jose Reyes. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Like, there was nothing better when Jimmy stood up oh. to the Mets. Classic. And that's why Jimmy will forever go down as one of our beloved characters because he gave the middle finger to the Mets and said, <laughs> you know what? We're the team to beat. I love it when they say F. Chase Utley, too. It's the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They hate him. They hated Utley. Oh, yeah. They hated Jimmy. They hated Howard. It was great. They had an epic collapse. Was that 2007? Their yeah, 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 man. Yeah, that love was the it. best. Yeah. That collapse was the greatest. So much fun to watch. I still get that that good vibe. Like it's like oh the Mets. Now they have a kid Thursday. He's pitching. Okay, Christian Scott. We've Mm -hmm. been talking a lot about uh, prodigies and young prospects and everything. Christian Scott. He's a lefty. Mm. He's their best prospect. Okay. So we get him on Thursday. He just pitched against the Braves. Pitched well. I think he got bit by a home run, but he only allowed three runs to the Braves. Struck out eight. That's they haven't had good spells. luck with their high price free agents, which uh, really pains me to watch. But, <laughs> yeah. All right. The billionaire, what's his, Cohen? He's yeah. trying to buy a World yes. Series. It ain't happening. Yes, that's right. That's right. All right, time now for the best and the worst of the weekend. Uh, let's do it. Give me your best, okay. JP. All right, so we had, um, so I saw on Twitter, that Jakob Voracek, our, one of our greats here in the past couple of years. Uh, Voracek, guys, he's doing color commentating in Czech Republic. Hmm. And I thought it was really cool to see. I thought he like had that personality for it, but apparently he has knocked out the ballpark. Someone said that his vocabulary was super surprising, but it was cool to see Jakob going to color commentating. Yeah, I thought he always Voracek. had a command Voracek. of the English language, didn't he? 
Maybe I've never we thought about him. it one way or another. Yeah. Like, Will we see him in the NHL one day? We'll see. But it was cool to see him finding his wow, next time. Bust out. You went Voracek. <laughs> Voracek. Color commentating <laughs> in the Czech Republic. You're not a fan of Voracek color commentating, cuz? Dude, if I told you I never even, uh, A, knew it, B, with, I will tell you the last time I thought about Voracek. No. <laughs> it's probably when he was playing. Uh, he, well, when he came here. When he came here, when the Coyotes were in Philly. They did a great standing O for Voracek. That was the last time I saw him. Yeah, sometimes we over celebrate guys <laughs> that don't need that. Stu's retired yeah. now. He's not even playing anymore. Yeah, it was Voracek. Like, all right. You know, like the line with G and Simmers. I wasn't getting you excited. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's been a rough, dude, been a rough dude, decade like, of we, hockey. That's my point. We celebrate nonsense. Like Voracek's a, one of a, f- a million faceless dudes. Okay. That have gone here. I'm not. I'm not I'm, uh, again, that just shows you how long it's been since they were freaking relevant. Since they had a top line, a legit top line. That's what we're talking about here, cuz. Yep. That that. <laughs> I mean, the last legitimate top line was you got to go back to '88. Okay. And Leclerc. The Legion of Doom. Yeah. I'm with you, JP. I'm a big Voracek guy. He used, like to, he used to come into O'Neill's <laughs> Pub on Third Street where I hung out after every game, do a shot of uh, Jameson to get a six-pack of Pilsner Kel. <laughs> Did shots with us. I'm a big Voracek guy. I like that he's out Bring there. Bring him to the NHL. Yeah. Just some color commentating. The fact that you brought him up today is bust out. That's You get that's you get plus signs for the, for the bus. I'm just shocked that I never, like... We need some hockey talk on here. On a Monday, you're giving me, you know, the the analysis of Wurichek's commentating. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Why? What do you got? Mine's not going to be that impressive. You know, I wanted to go Phil's, but I... The best part of my weekend is I got new underwear. Hey, everyone can relate. Yeah, it's it's exciting. Not, my dream in life to go is new underwear and socks every day. There's nothing like fresh, brand new underwear and socks. So Dude, like, I agree. Nice support. Socks and underwear. <laughs> great. You know, I'm having a great morning. So it's clearly the best move was buying underwear this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. What's your brand? What's your brand? Well, I've been... I have to dabble because, you know, I got a little bit of a muffin top, so I, the waistband <laughs> can't roll over. Okay. So I got these Calvin Klein's on right now. Oh, there you go. Solid go. waistbands. That's a good, yeah. that's a good item a there. CK, man. Yeah. yeah. Good waistband. Like the CK. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's quality underwear. Yeah. And, and, the, uh, <laughs> and the socks are key. Oh. Dude, the socks, like you got a good sock. Yes. So Good comfy. sock rules. You know, when bands go on the road, people always try and like, oh, what do you need? Socks and underwear. Because they rarely do laundry. They're like just yeah, starting out yeah, in the van. Yeah, they yeah. all want so- packs of socks and yeah. underwear. Because the sock, because when the sock goes bad, yeah. it's bad oh, yeah. sock. Yeah. It's hard. What's your go-to length for sock? What do you like? I'm, I'm winner. Tube. I, yes. The tube? <laughs> winner. But then summer ankle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. you. I'm a high sock guy all the way. He is a high sock guy. I love high socks. What do you think about the high sock with the shorts? I don't like high sock shorts. Yeah, I'm not a fan of I don't like the high sock shorts. No. They're not too good. They're like like mid But that's your soccer look. That is, yeah. That's a soccer look. Yeah, you got it. I'm with you, Frazier. Thank you. You like the high top short guy? Yeah. I like the high top short. Never high top short. I think that's it. Tube socks. Like, you never went high. Like, when we were growing up, you never did high top shorts. No. Uh, no, you scrunch them down if you did. Yeah. Because well, they didn't really have the no-show socks for us back right. in the day. You, you had to add the three-quarter yeah. that yeah. you would scrunch down. Yes. Then they came out with the no-show sock. Yeah, I can't do that. I love that. That's a great sock. <laughs> it's not you enough get sock. Like a, it feels like it's going to like roll down the foot. You know? No, like, no, but if you get a, bit, a, a nice... Like a good Nike, I like the Nike sock. Yeah, nice it's quality. Yeah, sock. Nike sock under is armor, good. That's a good quality. Like, yeah, and you get the good quality, it's thick. Yeah, on the bottom, right? It's good sock. What do you yeah. wear? Fruit of Loom socks or what? What's going on? They're- no, I do the Adidas, the, the oh, Nike. Yeah, yeah Adidas. Adidas. Right. Do you guys do the sock to bed? No. no. No? Sometimes, sometimes. No bed sock? No. no. I hate cold Bed feet. socks? No. I'm a bed socks guy. What? No, I can't yeah, do I wear that. These guys are like clammy foot. <laughs> no good. Foot. No, I need it. <laughs> ah, it's horrible. Sometimes really? I gotta put them on because I do have a clammy foot. Peggy will be like, your foot's all clammy. You put a sock on. <laughs> oh, that's I can't have nothing on my foot. Nah. 
I don't like the exposed legs. toe. It feels weird to me. I don't know why. Well, you get to, but that's why you have, you're under the covers. Get the sheet. Nah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm out on this on the sock the bag. <laughs> By the way, Eddie Wright, my man, comes out has a great line. He calls guys like Voracek cold McDonald fries guy. <laughs> 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 like it's just cold McDonald fries. Still a decent fry though. I'd still eat it. Well, that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. his point. Yeah. His point is that, like, it's cold McDonald's fries. Yeah. Like, you sort of eat it. Still better than the but other it's fries not like out a, there. It's not like a hot fry. You go, wow, like a hot fry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that. Yep. All right. What's your best? Oh, your best yeah. underwear. You did my best. Worst. <laughs> All right. The worst I'm going to go. Uh, so this past Saturday, if you guys noticed, there was a lot of cowboy boots, a lot of cowboy uh, hats in the city. It's because Morgan Wallen, the biggest country star to date, was here in Philadelphia. <laughs> right. Morgan yeah. Wallen. Who? That's right. Morgan Wong? If Morgan Wong was a country star, that would be amazing. From the, from the Red Sox. Morgan Wallen. All right. So Wallen. listen, guys, not a country guy. I'm not a country advocate. Just going off what we're seeing online, right? So he's... he's oh, listen, I don't care one way or another, but I don't know. He's performing, right? He's doing. He's got a. Big Why is it they always have two first names? Wallace, a country no. first name. Well, but it, it sounds like a Wallace. Sounds like a first name kind of thing. Luke Bryan. Yeah, they're like, always two first always names. Always weird. Yeah. Dudes. Zach was it? Zach Brown. Zach, Zach Brown. Zach Brown. Zach Brown. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Not, so, not what, so what's this guy? So All right. So it's Morgan Wall, biggest country star right now, right? He's coming to CBP. Sells out CBP. Cool for him. He's, wow, he sells out right? Citizens Bank Park. It was packed. Oh, that's unbelievable. Dallas yeah. Goddard started so, to dude, do it. When it comes to music, I'm I, I'm out. I'm, okay. just, I know, I'm, in, I'm not inclined. I, mean, I, got, I got country I lost buddies. the gene. <laughs> I lost the gene. So, cause, so he's got a, a, a popular song. The same after the Atlanta Braves. He calls it the 98 Braves, right? So before he sings it, he tells the crowd. The 98 Braves. Yeah, he's got a song for it's 98. Citizens Bank singing that song. I was at that World Series, by the way. Where are you now? And those Fugazis didn't even sell it out. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a song about it? What was it? I didn't sell out the World Series? ATL? <laughs> I, might have to, I might have listened to that. I'm curious what that looks like. Oh, man. It didn't even. My father happened to be down there at the time. I got a I got a face value ticket for him. Oh, for Day real? Day of the wow. game. Wow. wow. Really? Day of the game. That's a Fugazi. So, no, but he did, before he started singing, he did tell the crowd, I'm going to sing this song, but granted, you guys have owned us the past couple of years. It's got to be Citizens off the Bank set. Bank. Off the set. It's a violation, it's man. Citizens Bank Park. You can't, at CBP, you can't sing that song. But then the, the crowd. What, that's like a favorite? Then the crowd at the end of it, because they break out and let's go Philly shoots. So they, the crowd, you know, they, they understood the assignment. Let's go give it to the crowd. Yeah, the crowd. You, but you yeah, sing you're... that song there. Listen, cuz. Wow, but he's wearing the Phillies jersey oh. while he's singing the song. Yeah, the City worse. Connect wow. jersey. He's wearing the Bro, VG hat. The, and the City jersey. Connect jersey? Yeah. Like, oh, what are you doing wearing that jersey? Yeah, you can't wear the jersey. If you're a Braves guy, like, you write a song about the Braves? You can't wear a Phillies jersey? Yeah, come on. That's a violation on, on Kellen. What's Total. His name? Kellen. Kellen Morgan Wong. Morgan, <laughs> Morgan Wong. <laughs> Kellen, Kellen Wong. <laughs> Kellen Wong. <laughs> no, you cannot. I'm sorry. You can't wear a Phillies jersey. Nah, he should take it off to sing the song, if anything. I'm sure, I, listen, I respect the fact that he's a sports guy. I think that's awesome. But you can't wear the jersey. Like, could you imagine if you were a country singer, right? I don't You're want to imagine JP. that. I would love to imagine JP right. as a country no. singer. All right. Here's PJ. All right. It, you can't wear a, 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 a so you can't wear a Cowboys jersey singing about an Eagles song in Dallas. Oh, I agree. Right? Your like, skin would burn. I agree. Like you just can't. You can't do that. Like you can't. You got to be true to your squad. You wrote a song. It's a popular song about the Braves. You got to be true to your squad. 
No. Well, so I got upset last year because Drake came into town and he did this whole AI introduction thing. And then there was like an AI clip of him, a young him, win a Phillies jersey. That pissed me off because a couple of years ago, him and Meek Mill had beef and he came out with the back to back song. The cover of the back to back song was Joe Carter rounding out third base when the Phillies. I know. He's, he, no, no. And so, like, now all these years later, what you're going to say you were a Phillies fan as a nah, kid? That one crazy. drove me up. A, yeah, up a yeah, wall. yeah, yeah. I know. It's pandering. You're going to be real with that stuff. That's. Your back in the day moment brought to you by Rite Aid. Rite Aid keeps you honest. Typical, Rite Aid.com. Yes. Typical Braves fan writing a song about a losing season. Just feels so bravish to me. Just losers. What do you mean? 98 they won. No, they lost. They lost. Didn't they? No, I thought they the won. song was about when they lost because then he had a breakup. His love. They beat the Indians. Oh, I thought the song was about a breakup. Like, and well, maybe really that was 90, 90. 97 was the Marlins. No, the break. It was 98. Let me see. The Braves. I did. The Braves. The Maybe I'm wrong, Indians but I thought it was won. about. But that could have been 96. I thought that they came up short and his new love relationship Well, you came know about the short. song. I just, I just read about it because I, I heard about Braves this guy Indians of the 90s. Yeah. Uh, I covered that series. It could have been 96, though, or 95. All right, actually. the 1998 World Series. Why is this is not better detailed? Yankees. No, it was Yankees Padres. It was 98. Yeah. So maybe the, they lost to the Padres? Yes, because he mentions the Padres in the song. Oh, uh, really? Yep. All right. I, really, I respect even go with a, a, with a win. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I respect that. All right. Well, they beat the 90. Braves four games to two in 98 NLCS. Well, listen, we, were, we talk about heartbreak all the time. That's sports heartbreak. I actually like it more. I'm no, out. I'm, out. I'm not singing a song about the '93 film. I'm not singing it, but like, but I, I think it's what heartbreak. Woman, sports team. Come on, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna make a song about this. You wearing cowboy boots? <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's at the morning yeah, while right. so you Grab your tractor, and do, uh, start singing. Uh, white sneakers on the night. Nice. <laughs> Little Ferrari, Lamborghini action. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, cuz you don't listen to any music? Well, I have my yeah, you I have like a like a pump, yeah, pump I pump. have my music, but I I'm he's like I don't 70s have 70s R&B. Oh, there you 80s, go. 80s uh, R&B. Like, well, I like the old school. I like that. I like I'm into all that. the old R&B stuff. Yeah. yeah like, man. I like all the old Philly sound, soul, a little Delphonic. What's that, the, yeah, what's I love the, that stuff. What's the leg and day? And I do like and I was a grunger in the 90s. Oh, okay. Oh, there you right. go. You know. Nice. So what's the leg day playlist cuz what what do you, what, uh, dude, to get I, that squat on? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm I'm out. Like, Sugar uh, Hill Gang. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's awesome. Sugar Hill Gang. Uh, what do you got? Uh, I'm, I'm staying below the waist. I had a worse. This is more like a PSA for everybody out there. I went to a show, an art show at Fergie's Pub, and I was like, oh, I'm going to get a massage afterwards. So I walked over to get a massage, and I had that thought, do I need to go to the bathroom or not? I was like, ah, I'm good. If you're ever getting a massage, clear it out, because I could enjoy the massage. I was so worried about Busted ass and farting the whole time. <laughs> I could not enjoy the massage in a proper way. So this is a PSA <laughs> to everybody out there, dude. That's awesome. Oh, Clean your, man. clear out before you. Uh, if you're on the that fence, clear it out before the massage. That's terrible. The relax they hit that spot. You're just, oh, a couple vertebrae <laughs> pop, and I was like, oh boy, here it comes. No, oh, that's we survived. Terrible, so that was dude. yeah, ruined my massage kind of. That's terrible. Oh that's, my god, that's awful. That's terrible. All right, uh, that'll do. What was your best and worst of the weekend, Andrew? Um, my worst. Talk about that. Watching the Union game was miserable, terrible. Um, not doing good. Andrew. They're not doing good. Uh, my best was so I was on a trip. You guys know about uh, camping. yeah. Tell, tell the story of the campground and the uh, how the camp was invited by. Invaded by wild horses. Yeah, so I went to Assateague down in Maryland. It's um, right below uh, Ocean City, Maryland. Beautiful national park. Um, the big thing that everyone, the draw there is that there are wild horses on the island. And, and it's right there on the beach, right? You're on the it's beach. Right, you're right on the beach. Um, so That's awesome. My girlfriend and I went there. We were there for a couple days. Uh, beautiful weather, beautiful time. Um, but the thing is, wild horses are wild and they kind of do their own thing. And one night uh, we were hanging out at the campfire and like seven horses come rushing into our campsite. That's awesome. And immediately they're running to our food. 
So we had everything locked up. We had like coolers, we had all this stuff. So we had our food locked up because they kind of told you like, hey, horses will do this. Make sure that you are prepared and you don't lose your stuff. Well, you know, we were drinking a couple beers and we had some trash and they ran right up to the trash bag. They start ripping the trash bag out. Beer cans are going all over the place, all this stuff. They are there for like maybe 10 minutes and they, they sit down, kid you not, like four of these horses sit down right next to our fire. So I my, saw my girlfriend. Well, that's outrageous, my, dude. My girlfriend dude, and I. With nature. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. No, I'm not gonna lie. It was really cool. Beautiful. It's not. It was cool, but you know, we're sitting no, there. And VG. Horses scare me. They're big, man. They're not that. They're actually not that big. There, uh, they're like quarter horses, so like half the size. Quarter horse. But these it's a half uh, the size horse to call a quarter horse, not a half horse. A mini. Half horse, quarter like horse. I'm, I'm kind of making that up. Ponies so. running, I'm okay. <laughs> well, anyway, we're sitting there, and these two massive horses come in, and they like are. They must be the guards to these other horses that are there because they came in, and you could you could feel some Clydesdales. There was some there was some tension and whatnot. So they like they like backed us off from our campsite, but it was it was it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. I like it. it Sounds like a good time. Listen, That's awesome. I know we're late, but can we do a Brad Easter egg, please? Yeah. Brad today couldn't help but notice he changes up his background all the time. Yeah, he watches the show. He's in some books today. We got some books like Easter eggs whenever Brad oh, shows up. Oh, nugs. I'm walking right by Vichy's nugs. Yeah, well, I got a ton of nugs, but we're running late. But I just want to get to this Brad. Look at Brad. This is what we noticed behind him. He's got two books. No, nope, go back. Like I want to. I want to show the first. Like there's the first one. The secret language of birthdays. Yeah, um, yeah, with Brad with it behind him. But anyway, this is one of the books he's got behind him. The secret language of birthdays. I have this book in my house. The pagans got would. this book. Yeah, it's a pagan. Ass. Yes, it combines like <laughs> astrology with numerology, and it predicts your personality based on the day that you're born and I the time that book. you're born. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Brad's a little paganish background to him. Wow, that's impressive. And the other one. Is a John Taffer book. Wow. The Power of Conflict. <laughs> that picture of Speak John Taffer. Speak your mind and get the results you want. This is what he had on his background oh behind him. Oh, my God. Today. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> love the what Taffer. about the bride? Yeah, man. So I love I love picking apart the background. He's, I, he's so interesting. Brad, I Brad love East, seeing what's the Brad behind Easter him. Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> the Brad Easter hunt. Easter egg I love it. What are we? Uh, you got to yell? Uh, yes. So tonight, hold on, I need a second to pull up. I yeah. got one too when you're done, VJ. You got uh, a yellow too? I do. So we had an astrophysicist on when the solar eclipse came. My friend's a physics professor. Her and a bunch of physicists are doing at Two Locals Brewing tonight at 6.30, a journey into the unseen, sleep, space, and bubbles. And oh, that's awesome. My friend Where's is this at? Uh, two local brewing, thirty six seventy five Market awesome. Street. All right, she's go. She talks about. I'm fascinated by neutrinos. She says I study neutrinos, fundamental particles with tiny masses and no electric charge that are sometimes called ghost particle. They're all around us, streaming through us all the time, but luckily they rarely interact with us. Mm. So she's going to talk about studying ghost them. particles. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, we like got to get them in one day. All right, all we right. can get. We can get. I, I, yeah. I'm fascinated by the. Uh, I got, a, I got a line into these physicists. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> like well, we ghost got ghosts? Uh, so today, May 13th, marks the birthday of my own father, Juan Pablo Zapata. Oh, nice. Happy birthday, Dad. I'll see you in a little bit. But yeah, happy birthday. Nice. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Juan Pablo Zapata. Juan Pablo Zapata. That's it. Oh, uh, happy, nice. birthday. happy birthday. You did a great job with this one. <laughs> You're a good man. You should bring him in one day. Yeah, I want to bring him in. He's working in North Philly today, so he'll, we'll have to bring him in. Did somebody come that you knew last week? No, nah, so that's actually funny. This, <laughs> so we, we have to talk with everyone in the office. We need to close this door. So a guy thought this was a bank. Someone gave him the wrong address. He didn't really speak much English, and granted, I'm the only one to speak Spanish here, so I had to help him try to. That was nice. It was nice he did that. That was cool. We almost had a guy walking oh in the middle of the show. <laughs> Yo, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Listen, you gotta. Uh, but that's great with your with dad. Tell dad we said hello. Happy birthday. Absolutely appreciate it, Mr. Z. Mr. Z. Mr. Z. That's what's up, all right. Uh You have one nug or two nugs? Uh, I can give us one nug that I think is interesting. You'll like. Uh, sharp football went through the wide receiver cap hits this year. I think the Eagles came in at 19th at okay. 27.6 million cap hit. Here's the list. The Eagles are on there somewhere. They're 19th. Yeah. You can't see it on here, but the interesting thing I found wow. of this, 
Dead last in cap hit at wide receiver are the Green Bay Packers at 11.5. Wow. And they got some players. They got studs. Yeah. yeah. I they thought that was fascinating. Studs. They yeah. got, oh, man, they're good. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Pack is good. They're, awesome. they're incredible. I have a, uh, a meeting tonight, a football parent meeting hmm. for hmm. Uh, St. Augustine. All right. Incoming mm. freshman. All Ooh. right. So we have it's a exciting. meeting tonight. So I got to go down to St. Augustine tonight for mm. Anthony. Nice. There you go. And uh, he's incoming freshman football. There cool. we go. That's Love exciting. It. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Gonna, you know, We're going to be covering St. Augustine he's, games here. He's got to be, yeah. uh, you know, he's working out. I go, dude, did you do? Because I was with baseball a week and I'm. I got to keep tabs on him. You working up, out? Up, down, burpees, all that stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude. Got to go hang out with Baldy. Yes, he does. Uncle Baldy. He was there with him once. Yeah. Yeah. We you remember? You, yeah. Met, you met Anthony. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, you were there. Um, we all silly like the mayor. 